Hi, everybody. It is the Monday of the week of Thanksgiving. What better day than to create some artwork revolving around the things that we are thankful for? We have a lot of reasons to be thankful, and I know I am thankful for my watercolors and all of the bright colors all around me. So let's get started. Moving over here to my thankful artwork. Let's expand that so you can see what we're in for. As you can see, we've got the word thankful and then all of the colors of the rainbow included in this beautiful tree. So to begin, you will need a pencil. Another thing that you'll want to have ready will be your watercolor sets, your water cup with water, and a paper towel to rinse out your brush. So let's start with drawing. At the bottom of your page, what we're looking to do is to center the word thankful. So if you can kind of imagine that in your mind, T-H-A-N-K-F-U-L. All right, so on the example that you saw, I did mine in cursive, but you do not have to do your writing in cursive. So let's say if I want my thankful, T-H-A-N-K-F-U-L, that should fit pretty good. So I'll start just with a basic T. H, A, now I want to make it big enough so that it can be the base of my tree. K, F, U, L, thankful. And there are sure a lot of things to be thankful for. Perfect. Now, what we're going to do with the T itself is we're going to extend the T over to the left, above the K, maybe dip it over the F and back over and out the other side. Of course, this does not need to be straight. And in fact, I think it would look nicer if it wasn't straight. So there it is, thankful, beautiful. Have that all written out. Now it's time for us to draw the trunk of the tree. So we'll start here approximately where the K touches that line that you just did. And now what I'd like you to do is think about it this way. I say this in my head. I'm going to go to the left, to the right, and up. So it looks like this, ready? From the K to the left, to the right, and up. Notice I stopped just short of the top of my tree, excuse me, of my paper. So there we go, that is a line one. That's gonna be the tree trunk itself. Next, second line is we're going to do what I call Y the top, the Y branch. So you'll go, right here, come about maybe where it bends, not quite to the middle of the tree, but more towards the top. And now you're going to create a branch that goes out to the right-hand side. You see how it looks like the letter Y at the top? That's why I call them Y branches. Very good. Now let's do that same thing. And now we're going to Y out the one that we just did. So now at the base of that one, take your pencil, and draw another one so now it looks like there's a Y going off to the right hand side. So that's three branches so far. Now over here, that was our first one from our tree trunk. Let's go off to the left now. So from this one here, don't go right where it splits. Maybe come up here, maybe about an inch from where everything was gathered before. And now we'll go off and to the left hand side. Very nice. That's our fourth branch. Our fifth branch, what we're looking to do is go below where all of these started. And let's now go off and to the left again. That's number five. And then last but not least, our sixth branch for the tree. Before we start to paint, we will drop down below the one that we just did and now send this one out and to the right-hand side. There you go, the drawing part is done. Now it's going to be time to paint. How much fun is this going to be? So ladies and gentlemen, grab your paintbrush. We are going to start with black paint today and we'll start with the actual tree itself. So very good. So I'm going to take my paintbrush. Now in this set, it's a little tricky because remember the one that's next to the red is purple. So we wanna come way down here to the black paint. Now I'm looking to have some very thick black because I want my tree to have a real thick, strong trunk and a thick color. So as you can see, I'm just sort of sliding and gliding my brush across the black. And what we'll do is we will start at the top of our tree and we're going to work our way down. So that very first branch that you made, that's the one we're going to start with. So I'll start up at the top and pulling my brush, very carefully, 
Now, if you get a little wiggly, please don't worry about that. Trees can be have wiggly trunks. In fact, it's very nice. And I usually will stop at some of these parts where things join up because that's a logical place instead of trying to do the whole thing at once. That could be really tough. So let's go all the way down here to where the thankful T crisscrosses with my black. Fabulous. That's the first part. Very good. Now let's grab some more black paint. And now we'll start with the branches that we created. I tend to like to start on the outside, right at the very tip of the branch and work my way towards the trunk of the tree. Now notice I'm going to smooth my branch into the tree itself. Instead of having it just be connected like, like lines connecting, I want it to look like when branches connect to a tree trunk, they tend to have a little bit thicker base where they come from. So, and again, if your branches are a little wiggly, don't sweat it. We're going to cover that up with all of these beautiful colors. So just keep on doing what you're doing. Grab some more paint. Of course, we're sliders and gliders, not smashers. And now we'll work our way from each branch. When I start out at the tip of my branch, I start very lightly. And then I generally will press down a little bit harder because the harder I press, the thicker my line will become. So again, very light at the tip. And then as I get to the trunk of the tree, see that time I took a little bit of a detour, but no big deal. I'll just smooth that all in. So it looks like my branches are coming from the trunk itself. Every once in a while, you'll notice I get just a little bit of water to make sure my paint is still flowing nicely. And there we go. Tree branches complete. Now, I don't know about you, but I think my tree trunk looks kind of wimpy. So what I'll do is from here, from that very last branch that I did, now I'll make that a little bit thicker. And notice as I get to the top of my T, I'll make that look like it's the base of the tree trunk. Fantastic. So there's the tree. Now let's work on this thankful, shall we? The first thing that I would propose that you do is to start with that big top of the T that we did, like as if that is the ground itself. And notice I'm going to smooth in and do my best to get a little dotty towards the edges so it's a little thinner. And that's like the umbrella over the word thankful. So here we go. Now it's time to make thankful look like the roots or like it's connected to the roots of the tree. If we look at this one that I have finished, see how everything, the tall letters are connected right to that line. So great. Now I'll work left to right. So here is my T. So maybe to make it look like it's the root, I would split that and make that a little thicker on the top. Here's my H. My H could be connected too. Now for each letter, I'm just grabbing a little bit of paint and I am painting oh so lightly right now so that my paintbrush, you see the harder I push, the thicker my lines will be. And I don't want this to be super thick. I'd like to be able to read the word thankful. Now, if you have too much water in your paint, remember you can always wipe it off on the paper towel that you're using. Now check this out, I'm at the K. And do you see how these things are all, it's not really looking like it's meant to be joined to this part of the tree. So what I'll do is I'll smooth in and make try to make this look like it's maybe a root that's going down into the letter K. The idea here, 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 haha, is that we want to make this sort of a little surprise, that people will notice this beautiful tree that we painted. And then when they look a little further, they realize, oh my goodness, the word thankful is at the bottom of the tree. How cool is that? So you see how you could get that H to look like it's some little roots in there. And that, excuse me, the F. And now let's incorporate the U. And the L, of course. Nice. So here again, I'll try to make that look like it's a root that's growing down into the word thankful by just rounding out and pouring that into the letter L. 
This one looks like it could use a little extra oomph. And then as you look at it, you might decide you want to change some things just a little bit. Like maybe you'll want to add a little bit of something to the end of the L, perhaps to the end of the L, the T. Totally up to you. But let that word thankful be kind of a little bit of a surprise in the roots themselves. Beautiful job. Now, at this point, I'm going to wash out my brush and dry it off because now it is time to start some rainbow colors. Now, as we look at this tree, you will see that we are going to make our way around these branches. And there just happen to be six branches for the six colors. And we'll start with red and work our way around the tree, blending as we go. The other thing that we'll need to do is to drop some of those colors on top of the word thankful. So here we go. We have a blank tree. And we'll need to be very, very careful because the bottom of the tree has that black paint that's just a little bit shiny and wet. So as you're doing this, just be a little mindful of where your wrist and where your hand is hitting the paper so you don't mess up your beautiful word. All right, so reds first. Take your brush, slide and glide across the red. Getting that really nice and thick. What we're looking for is a nice thick color today so that it can have some power with this black tree that's behind it. And when you begin with your colors, what I'd like you to do is you'll start way out here at the tip of the tree branch. So now here's the thing. Whatever brush stroke you use, keep using that very same one. What I'm going to do is I create little dots. So it's like I just do like this little dot thing. I'm not smashing my brush. I'm just dancing little dots around the tip of my tree branch. Now, the idea here is we want to have the most color by the tree branch itself. So I'll have to once in a while notice, again, little tiny dots. I'm not smooshing, I'm not mashing, I'm being very nice to my brush. And as I get to this thicker part of the tree, maybe I'll thicken that out a little bit. So where the branches get thicker, we do more color. So there's the branch itself. Now, in order to get it to look like we have branches and things that are extending beyond just this solid red part that we just did, now what you do is you just kind of take your brush and you just lightly skip and dance to extend and make it look like we've got some littler things going out further. And the trick of this is you want to be what we would call random. It shouldn't look like a pattern and it shouldn't be exactly the same. We're trying to give it some variety. Now, in the center here, my goal is going to be that I will crash red and orange together. So you want to extend some of that red towards that branch that's above it. Fantastic. Now, as we go, please know you can always add more colors. So better to leave some airy pockets and have some options later than to make it all solid red and then go, oh, geez, how am I going to fix this? So now, before I move on to orange, though, I will pretend that some of these little red leaves have dropped on the ground as well. So I'll put some red here by my thankful. If your thankful is a little bit wet yet with the black paint, just be very, very careful. If some of that blends in, just consider it a happy accident and throw just a little bit of those reds into the area on top of thankful. Perfect. Now wash out your brush really, really well. Dry it off. And now we will move on to orange. So with that clean brush, activate your orange by letting that water sit on there a little bit so you have a nice thick color. Very, very nice. Again, notice I'm sliding this brush anytime I'm trying to grab the color. I'm not smashing it into the paints. I'm just sliding it across the top. Now let's do the same thing with the next branch. So we'll start up here and we'll add some of these nifty brush strokes. Notice some of them I make a little bigger, a little bolder, some I dance a little lighter, and we're going to take care of the branch itself. Now, if your black paint starts to rub off on your brush, you can use that. It's a nice look, but if it gets too messy, then wash out your brush, because you don't want to get that black all in your watercolors and then have icky, nasty orange that won't be nice for other paintings that you do later. Okay, so there again, the branch is good to go. Now let's do some of that fun dancing. So now I'll take my brush and do a little, oops, sorry, uh, dance out, maybe a little bit airier, kind of pretend that I'm making some extended branches. Notice how those are real little and dainty compared to the other thicker ones that I did here. 
Now let's pretend that there's some leaves going out this direction. And then this is where it gets good. This is where now I'm going to do some dotting and some extension and crash my orange leaves a little bit into my red ones so that we're filling in this area in between. So you have red, red, orange, and then the orange. Oh, how beautiful. Now, of course, because I am extending these little teeny dots and leaves, I want to make sure that I'm heading up towards my next color, which will be the yellow. So let's take some of these and make sure that we have some of this orange stuff in between my orange area and what will next become the yellow in rainbow order. Very good. And before I decide that I'm moving on to the yellow, add a little bit of those orange leaves down here to complement where the orange leaves might fall. Fantastic. This is looking great. Okay. Very important. Wash out your brush. Now I have some dirty water because this is like my third painting of the day. But notice, even though my water is slightly dirty because I wipe my brush off each time, I'm fine. I can take now my water, activate my yellow. And again, we want that water to soak into the yellow so that we have this bright, beautiful, vibrant color. So be patient. Let that soak in so you have the thickest, brightest yellow you could possibly have. And here we go. We're repeating the same process, starting at the end of my branch. And I'm just dotting and moving my brush. Now, as you do this dotting process, I'm sure you're developing your own little routine on what your dots look like. And what's neat about this is no matter who is painting, all of us will do this just slightly different. We're applying the same colors, but some people will have a little longer brush stroke. Some people will have real teeny tiny dots that they like to use. Whatever you are doing, just keep doing the same thing and your tree will come together just beautifully. So we have the branch covered. Now remember, we're going to extend and dance out to the top with some littler things. We'll come maybe over here, move that and dance that brush around. Now do you see some of my black is getting picked up a little bit? I don't mind that because it makes the color just a little bit darker. Nice. I'm gonna grab a little more yellow. Remember, we need to crash the orange and the yellow together. So pretty. So we have that orange, yellow, orange, and then the yellow itself. And now I've got that little teeny bit of, of orange on my brush. I'm going to use that up. And I'm going to add in lots of dots because now, remember, we need to crash this one into the green. So some of my yellows I need to build up on this side so that they can combine and do a smooth transition from the yellow to the green. Super cool. Grab some color, and let's see, my yellow is one of those colors that could go on both sides, because do you see how now the yellow could come over here? So we'll add some dots on top of thankful. I like to put a little bit in the words too, just because then that highlights and it's not just cut off to the word thankful. Beautiful, moving on. Wash out your brush, wipe it off. Let's get some green going. Put that water on the green. Slide and glide your brush, being patient for my green to be able to have a real bright, bold color as I apply it. And here I go, moving on again. Concentrating on the brightest, the darkest part of my green being closest to the branch. It's almost like you're making a little Christmas tree. Skinny at the top, thicker at the bottom with these colors like so. Again, doesn't have to be solid. You can leave some pockets, leave some little white spots. That looks really, really nice. And now that I have that taken care of, now let's do that extension. Let's dance out a little with some smaller dots to the top, to the right, to the left. Maybe extend some of this here. I've got some nice wet green paint. So, and now of course you got to do the crash of the green and the yellow together. That looks cool, huh? Okay, and then let's move out here towards what will become our blue branch, making sure we've got some nice green extending towards that one so that those two can kind of come together. Let's see, I might add a little extra 
green small dots in there just to make that a little more refined. And then finally, taking that green and adding a little as if it fell on the ground by our word, some of those little dots. I could even, I could pretend that some of the green fell onto this side a little bit too. Why not, right? Okay. Notice how I'm trying to mix it up. It's not all just in a little line. It's sort of some dots are higher, some are lower. Kind of challenge yourself just to put one that's all alone. Okay, washing out my brush. Next, we have the blue. Activating my blue. Looking great. And I will start at the top of my branch. And again, that kind of effect of smallest to largest when it comes to the area. Taking my little brush stroke. Adding this all in. Notice I'm going right on top of the branch itself. Extending out. Okay, now again, let's do that dance. Get a few kind of floating out here on their own so it looks like it's refined. Blending, maybe like trying to get a branch, see how my blue's going to crash into my green. And now let's make sure that we have some heading towards what will be the final beautiful purple. So see how I'm trying to make that look like it's a little feathered out, some bigger dots, some real dainty little ones out here. Great. Adding some of that blue to the base of my composition. Looking great. And last but not least, the grand finale color, the purple. Now in my set again, it's a little tricky because the purple is actually next to the red. If you prefer to call it violet, we'll go with violet as well. Adding in the paint itself and making sure to slide and glide with that water. Getting that bright, bold violet. And here we go, starting at the end of the branch. Dancing with those little dots. I'm not smashing. I'm just quickly moving my paint. Another reason for being quite quick about this is when you have this wet purple or violet hitting the wet blue, then the colors will automatically join together all on their own. They'll create their own blue violet and you don't have to do a thing. You just have to sit here and let it dry. Okay, great. So I have the branch covered. Now it's the razzle dazzle. Add a little variety to the directions of my violet. And with this one, the bottom of the branch becomes very, very important because we want this to have that finishing touch for the bottom edge of your tree branches. So again, you can come from the thicker and extend a little out here. Maybe we need just a little refinement so that it doesn't all just end with the branch. We wanna make an effort to extend that fully in some different directions. Beautiful. And now let's add in some of those as if they fell to the ground. You could even like if you wanted to, have some falling towards the thankfulness. If you like, you could put some in the air. In this one, I did not, but you can see if you get a dot in the middle of nowhere, just go with it. And as if it's meant to be like that, right? Let your paintbrush help you make your decisions. Okay, wonderful. So there you have it, the complete thankful tree. As your last step, Take one last look at what you've got. And if you feel like there are some areas that just require a little extra, like I'm thinking maybe I could put a little yellow in here just to give that gap a little bit more. This is your finishing phase where you'll take always washing your brush, of course, in between colors. Just feels like I need a little something up in that top part of the tree. Maybe I need a little more in through here. Uh-huh. 
I think I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about this. So I'll wash off my brush. And then as the artist, it's difficult to sign your name in paint. Of course, if you would want to take your brush, grab a little black and do some initials in the corner, that would be a great idea. In fact, let me show you that. I'll take my brush. Now this will take a very, very light touch. But if you were going to do your initials, you could maybe do something. Here is my first letter of my first name, which is actually Michelle, not Mrs. And then let's put in my K for Conrad. So there you have it. If you'd like to do it in paint, you could try your initials. Or if you are feeling up to the task of actually signing your name with your paintbrush, great. Another thing you could do is you could simply take a black pen and sign your name in that bottom right hand corner as the fabulous artist responsible for this very thankful tree. So everyone, I truly hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. I know I am very, very thankful for these opportunities to make these videos and to be with you and have a wonderful week. I cannot wait to see these beautiful, thankful trees that you create. Thanks for being here. Have a great day.